Thanks for coming back. It's good to have you all join me again. Today we're gonna to be painting a old gas station that was in my hometown growing up um, called Ken's Cash. And I just found a reference on Google that represents this pretty well, but I spent a ton of time here as a kid and like penny candies and snacks and stuff like that. I remember taking my parents' quarters and going up and buying stuff with it. So I thought it'd be fun to to kind of pay homage to my hometown and do this. But this is, it's such a unique building. It's kind of got that old West feel to it. Um, just the architecture is super cool. It's been around forever. Um, I think it was family owned for a long time. I'm not sure if they still own it or someone like overtook it, but it's still extremely popular. Um, gets, you know, tons and tons of visitors, especially during the summer. Uh, but just a super cool little unique gas station that uh, I've just always loved and just spent a ton of my childhood in here. It's a miracle I don't have diabetes from all the candy <laughs> that, I, uh, that I ate from here. But yeah, so it's got these really interesting pillars, uh, similar process. No different from what we've done in the past, but we're just laying out our groundwork uh, first with our, our pen. You can do it either way you want. You can always lay paint first and then do pen. Um, I just found it's easier for me to start with pen. There's going to be this little awning coming off with a bunch of wooden shingles. Uh, so that line is going to follow the other line. So see how I don't have two lines going different directions. Um, that helps with perspective and it kind of sits at this weird kind of diagonal to the top of the paper and that kind of makes it feel like you're sitting below the subject um, as a perspective. But here's the awning. Yep, that looks good. Not being super, super picky about my lines. Picky enough that it works, but... Um, A little bit of ruggedness, never hurt anyone. Especially not for this store. This store is the definition of rugged and quaint. <laughs> all the big words, all the fun, interesting words. But yeah, they had everything. It's basically like a little grocery store inside. Uh, they even have like a little meat deli and stuff like that in the back. and. It's tiny, 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 but you can definitely go grocery shopping here if you wanted to. Might be a little bit more expensive, but you know, that's okay. See, they're gonna have this roof coming off this side. Uh, just so you know, you guys know, I am using Pentelic pens, illustration pens. Um, they should be in my description below, but they're pretty solid pens. And then I'm, I'm actually using a cheaper paper today. I. Uh, I usually use arches, but I said, you know what, we're going to use master's touch paper because uh, I figure a lot of people starting out won't go right into the expensive, expensive papers. Uh, they're great, uh, but you can get away without using them. I would say eventually, once you start getting more and more comfortable, it's okay to step it up to a higher quality paper, but don't feel like you need, need, need to get expensive papers to be successful. These will hold paint a little differently. They, the paper won't, won't translate color as well. And that can be a problem, but it's, you know, it's totally fine. Most people won't know the difference unless they're a painter. Um, so that's fine. But see how my line that's further away converges down on itself? You don't want it to be flat because then that looks, it look like you're up above the 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 place so having that slant makes it it's kind of a weird perspective but it makes it look like you're below it um so keep working on perspective that is crucial to any form of art you know okay and then we're gonna have a wall down here and then a wall right here there is this little door comes off and I am using a reference and if you want to Google Ken's cash 
um, in Utah, you'll find it. The same one I'm using. So whoever took this photo, thank you. Cool. And I'm back and forth thinking about adding this little ice machine that's up against the wall. We'll see. But there's these cool, cool red pillars that come down like that. And then they get smaller and smaller as they go away from you in perspective. So this one would end like somewhere in here. And they also get thinner, right? So as you go away, those lines will converge down there. So that's part of perspective. It gives you more depth in your in your drawing or paintings. And then there's the last one down here. And that one will be the thinnest and furthest away from you. So therefore the shortest looking like that. And so see how that line converges? Those two lines go whoop. That's, uh, that's how you obtain more accurate perspective. And then since this is an awning, this, this line for the entrance of the door will sit further back than the pillars. Um, so that kind of gives it a little bit more depth in the photo as well. They wouldn't sit on the same plane because these are out front of that little opening. But then there's a front door in here. Yeah. And then we've got little windows right here. And another window right there. And all those lines are following the same rules. They're all moving at the same direction and slanting and following. So I'm always referencing what line I've already laid before and then basing my lines off of those, especially for like windows and stuff. Because um, if you had a, a flat line that wasn't following these lines, it would look really strange. Um, so make sure you're kind of following that. Cool. There will be some shade coming off that, but this is the front of that window. Really like that. Okay, we're gonna have a little tree. I know it's not in the reference, but little tree right there. Take some of these lines down because these are all old red wood panels. So we're gonna do some lines straight up and down. I'm not trying to make them straight and perfect. They're trying to be more jagged and broken up. Um, Cause straight and perfect never is accurate for real life. And it just helps show wear and tear on this super old building. You know, it'd be weird if it was perfect. And then there's this galvanized roof um, with some cool rust that will come in and and do as well, but that'll have some lines. But see how my lines are following the slant of the roof? If they're going straight up and down like this, it would just look strange and off. Um, once again, it's perspective. I know I say that all the time, but perspective is oh so important. Cool, and then that's gonna be shaded right there. Having some lines going off that can be okay. We'll come in and fill that in. Oh, there is this ice machine. Maybe we'll, yeah, let's add it in. So the ice machine has been there forever. So I guess it is a part of the, a part of the building. We'll honor it. Even though it's kind of hideous, but hey. Once again, lines are following each other. And it comes back like that. So really pay attention to where you're putting lines or else you can get kind of funky real fast. Yeah, I guess that did help. I was a little worried about it that it wasn't going to translate super well. I debated about putting a little truck in, but I, I don't think we need it. But um, that in a little power line here, because there is one in the background, but it's in a different position. It's okay to um, use your artistic uh, decision making, I guess, to kind of choose where you want stuff and rearrange things just a little bit. 
you know, it doesn't have to be super accurate. We'll do another one over here. Little tufts of grass. Come off very rough with my lines, that's okay. Not at all accurate with those, but as far as the setting goes, but it just helps kind of sell the hometown feel. You feel? Add in a tree over here. Because there is one. Yeah, I really like that. That's looking awesome. Let's make sure we've got everything though. Add in some more details in here, some of those more straight lines going up and down. Um, and then we've got definitely some shingles we need to draw in. So there's gonna be this main top row of shingles right here. And those are following the same slant down on that uh, awning. That just seats them all in the same place. You're trying to create the illusion of, of standing there uh, in this setting. Um, and a lot of that has to do with perspective. Yeah, I'm a really big fan of that, actually. Let's see. Super cool, okay. There'll be some stuff back there, but we'll come in. Okay, now we're ready to start painting. And, yeah, coming through, so maybe you know, I actually might fill in these windows first, just to get them uh, done. But they do have some stuff in them, so we'll come through and just add our pen. And these don't have to be complete strokes, you know, they can be kind of rugged as well. Trying to keep them all going the same way, roughly. Um, you can also do cross hatching if you want, which is coming back over on the, the different angle that you just did, and keeping those consistent. I know there are some signs in these windows, so we don't want to completely cover those up. Yeah, see how much white space I'm leaving though? But all my strokes are going like that. I'm not going up and down and then switching. I'm keeping them all the same direction. Always, always the same direction. Here's the door. And as you practice perspective, it'll start to make sort of more sense and like um, keeping consistent pen strokes, it'll all start to make more and more sense the more you do it. Key is to just practice, 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 practice. And just look at references and just draw them. Uh, that helped me, just learning. Pretty soon you'll get the feel for it though and it'll, it'll start to really make sense and it becomes almost second nature. Um, we're gonna come through and add some shade on these Pillars too underneath where that awning's gonna catch with our pen, which is okay. This is just adding a lot of nice contrast in. Um, there will be some shade on this guy, so just light lines a little bit more spaced out. Same with this wall back here. Because our light source is coming from kind of that direction. So yeah kind of like top down. So these pillars will be illuminated and then the back of this wall will be darker. We'll give it a little porch. Yeah, I'm really, really digging that. It looks awesome. Cool, now I think we're ready to paint. So we're gonna use our trusty flat edge brush. This slants up, it's my favorite. 
Um, I'm using Koi watercolors. They're vibrant, they're great, I've had great success. They're not super expensive, which is always nice. So most of us don't have millions of dollars to <laughs> spend on art supplies, even though we'd like to. Um, but you know what, first I'm actually gonna dry it. So I have a hair dryer, I'm gonna dry my pen. Almost forgot, that can cause some issues. If you don't, they'll bleed. And that'll just help make sure that we're not gonna have a leaky pen everywhere. That's the worst when it starts to do that. Okay, now we're gonna come through and add some sky. So we're gonna start top down, brushes, brush strokes going the same way. Uh, can do whatever blue you want, but just make sure that you're keeping your strokes consistent. Cheaper papers, you'll have this weird kind of lineage through it, just from that's how the paper is made. It's not super high quality, so if you can deal with that, um, that's great. But I actually do quite a few paintings on this paper. It's not bad. Um, it's always a good refresher to to use, just because. Yeah. It's fun to use something you don't have to feel bad about messing up on. Um, if I use Arches cold pressed stuff and I screw up, I feel like an idiot, which I actually did today. I did the same painting, but I messed it up. And so I restarted and I said, you know what? I'm not gonna waste any more Arches. Um, so I just went back to my master's touch, which is just fine. There's no shame in that. Okay, we're gonna take, while this is still wet, and try to take up some of that blue at the bottom so it kind of fades up more. So I'm just cleaning off all the paint from my brush and taking just strictly water and coming up. And then you can also dab that up if you need while it's still wet. Trying to come through and just even out some of those strokes. That looks really good. Cool. Now we're going to start working on the actual building. So the front of this whole building is, if you're not looking into reference, is red. It's this really cool old western like shootout red almost. I feel like there's going to be a gunfight any second here. But we're going to come through and with quite a bit of paint and less water, we're going to come through and use the tip of our brush to create some texture and just bringing it down, following our lines. So you're kind of creating that interesting, it's not perfect, it looks like old wood, you know, with the tip of our brush. And it's okay to have some of those little lines, like I love that old rough texture. Um, so you achieve that by using less water and more paint on your brush. The more water you have, the more the paint will tend to uh, fold in on itself and and blend together which is good but for this stuff like this old style building you want to definitely have some texture in there texture is great same thing on this side the whole front of this building and side is red the roof is a different color so don't start painting that yet um, but even down there we'll come back through and define some of our shadows we're just laying the base color um, and then we'll come back through and build up our tone. So it's good to start light and then come back through and build up because you don't want to start too dark or else you'll, um, you can't ever reverse your darkness. You can try to somewhat correct it while it's still wet, but if you go too dark too fast, you run the risk of having uh, the point of no return, as I like to call it, where you can't reverse it really. So just calming down, doing a lighter wash first is way better. And I barely at this point have any water on my brush. So that's gonna create more saturated colors. Yeah, that's cool. Ooh, I love that. This is way better than the other one I did. So just so you're not, you guys know, you only see the, <laughs> the finished works. You don't see the ones where I totally botched it and then had to restart, which usually happens probably, probably once a week. You know, I have a bunch of old unfinished paintings that are just, they'll never see the light of day, you know? But that's good, it's its good to know that I screwed up and I can still redo it and do it better. Um, so I took black and mixed it with white. Like I said in my last videos, you never use light, white to lighten your colors. It will become muddy, um, but I used it with black to create a gray. Um, so we're gonna come through and just uh, we'll add a lot more water on our brush though. 
and come down and too much water. Especially with these cheaper papers, water will tend to not absorb as evenly. So you have to, you don't want to overdo it with your water because the paper will buckle a lot easier. Arches still buckles too a little bit, but in a more acceptable manner. Yeah, that looks really good. And then there is the secondary part right here, which is still part of the roof, but we're going to come back through with even more water because it is a little bit lighter. Um, but we're going to come back through and add some rust. So I'm pulling up some of my paint I just laid down just by wiping it off and then coming back through with water and pulling up some of that. Cool. Okay, now we got some more brick up here. And we'll just take a slight bit of brown and add that into our, our gray. And we're going to come through and just start. And it is going to have a little bit more white spaces, so I'm not making this a solid, solid color. Because you want to leave some space to represent those shingles like that, so it can be a little bit more rough. And then... I normally don't use a smaller brush, but I'm going to switch to a way small brush for these fine details up in here. Wipe off a lot of my paint. We're going to come back through with a pretty heavy dose of paint on our brush to try to bring in some of that detail going up that way for these shingles that face the other direction. So you got, just so it makes sense, you got shingles that come down right here like that, and then the rest of the shingles go that way. And we'll probably use this little brush to come back through and add more details later because it's a it's a great brush. Forgot to come through and actually do the window on this door, which is black too. We don't want this is a brush. We don't want to use our brush yet because that can be extremely hard to get good strokes with. It's temperamental, so I'm just using a different pen. Coming back through, following the same rules I followed for my other windows following the same direction. So if I were to go this way, those windows, they wouldn't look consistent. Cool. So we're going to come back through and start working on those posts out front, which are same thing as before. They're just red, um, but they won't be as dark as the wall behind it. You don't want them to be the same shade, which I just made it, but we're going to use a lot more water. Come through. We're also going to leave a little bit of white on the edge facing the sun, just to give it a little bit more contrast. You don't want it to be like a solid color, you know? Cool. It's looking really good. This door is white, but we'll come through and add some, some more detail to that. Now we're going to do the pavement, which is also gray, but you don't want it to be the same color as your roof because that'll be it just it'll look kind of flat and we want it to be very sparing with this so i added a little bit more black to my gray and we're going to use a lot of water and really dab that off on our paper towel and we're going to come back through and see how that looks and just following similar similar patterns left to right leaving some space for white spots Doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay to leave texture in there. I actually like it better if you break it up so it's not just this gray blob. Even though in the reference it looks like a gray blob, it's okay to break that up for sure. We're even gonna come back here and do some. Now we're gonna come through and do those trees in the background now that everything's dry. Um, it's okay to add a little bit of brown to your greens to dull them if you want. These ones, I'm mixing two different greens to kind of desaturate them. The ones I have can be very, that's the problem with koi. It can be almost unrealistically saturated, but you can always dull it down too. So it's no problem, but we're going to come through and just start with quite a bit of paint and laying our base color using different little kind of blotches, you know. These will dry a little bit brighter, or a little bit less intense. Ooh, that's just bringing it together. Let's see.
And then even back here, we're gonna have some, some shrubbery. So that can be just super, super light. Use a lot of water, really take the time to, to pull up that color. We don't want that to be the prominent thing, but it is back there. So it's okay to have a little bit of green. That just kind of ties in the background so it's not just sky to ground. You want some stuff in the background for sure. It's looking good. Kind of come through with our smaller brush and paint those poles with just brown. Following the same light patterns as before. So the light coming in this way. A little bit harder with these really thin poles, you know. Ooh, that was way saturated. It's okay, we're gonna build up some of our saturation, I think. Cool. Now, we're gonna take that same brush and take some more of that brown, mix it with a little bit more of like a golden tan, if you have it, and we're gonna come up and start doing some, you know, make sure a lot of the water's off, but we're gonna start doing some of that rust. Which we're just following the lines down, trying to keep some of that texture on the brush by using less water. And that'll make it look way better. And we're just doing lines. We don't, we don't want it to, to be a big um, blob and too wet and the colors will not create texture. They'll just kind of bleed together. So um, keeping your brush very dry. But see how that kind of just gives it that little hint of rust back there. And we can even add some up here too. It's not as rusted in the photo, if at all, but can kind of add some cohesion to it. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay, now we're going to come back through with some red, and we're going to darken that with a little bit of black. We're going to start building up some of our front wall tones. With the same little 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 brush and we're just gonna come through with a little bit of water and darken up some of these lines especially around the sign it's gonna cast a little bit of a shadow so you can imagine that sun's hitting it top down so the underside since it pokes out from the wall will cast a little shadow underneath but just taking some of that texture back in so it's not just the same red Gives it some of that wear and tear look, which is iconic of these old buildings. Yeah, I really like that. That's looking really good. I'd love to see your guys' finished work too as you guys complete these. And um, even if you didn't do the same building as me, if you just did your own building at home, I'd love to see it. I have an Instagram at Aaron Paint Stuff and I love, love, love seeing your guys' work. Makes me feel, makes me feel good. Okay, now we're gonna build up the tones underneath this awning. Don't paint your poles, just underneath. And I'm just mixing a little bit of black with my red to dull it. You don't wanna do too much though, cause it can, you don't wanna put straight black onto that. There's gotta be some color left. Um, not just dark shadows, or not just black shadows. Something like that though, because it is pretty shaded. But see how I'm retaining some of that red color? That is crucial for, for shadows, is you don't want them to just be, oh, it's just really dark under there, so it's black. No, there is still detail, even if it's harder to see. Um, so keeping that in mind as you do shadows, that you want to retain some of that detail. And I just picture the light kind of hitting the base of this, um, the base of this wall. So I left a little bit of it light. So see how starting light and then going dark on top is the way to go instead of going dark first. That can create some problems. And then the, the awning hits this wall back here. So we're gonna darken some of that as well. 
And this is the idea of adding contrast to your work. We're gonna keep building it up. Yep, contrast will set your work apart. So if you're in a stage where you're just not liking it, take a step back, say, does this have enough contrast and can I build up more contrast? And generally that'll be um, beneficial just because you, a lot of people seem to stop before they've built up enough contrast. And if you don't have contrast in your work, it just looks flat and lifeless and yeah, so I'm coming back through on these poles and shading one side of them. I'm still leaving the side that's facing the light source a little bit, but that's just solidifying those poles um, into their space and keeping the consistency with the contrast. And we're going to come back up to this area and not painting it all the way dark, but just bringing in some of that texture back up. And it's okay to spend time, let things dry, come back to it if you're frustrated. I get frustrated with work still, so um, you guys are not alone. It's the artistic way of living that is just expected that you'll have a lot of failures, a lot of successes. The key is to just not give up when you do have a failure. Um, and to try again or just take a break, come back to it. I've done that many times in my life where I've just worked so hard on something and then come back and hated every second of it. Um, so I get it. But the key is to just push through that stuff and keep working. And you'll, I think you'll have better success if you don't quit, you know. But that's the growing pains are hard, and I still have them, you know. So I'm not perfect, but whoa, that was a lot. We're gonna come back through and add some shadows. I'm gonna go back to my thicker brush, make sure it's clean. This brush right here, it's surprising these bigger brushes are actually easier to use than the small brushes. You have better control over the tip of the brush because they're so fine where that other one's a little bit more blocky. But we're going to pull out some of that. Just very light gray on these poles. Just because I can... See how that solidifies where the light source is coming from? <laughs> That's really cool, actually. I'm very happy with that. Even from that. So just thinking, thinking through your painting. Yeah, that's looking real, I'm really happy. You guys should have seen the other one, man. It was not nearly as good as this. Bring in some more shade under there. Not a lot, just a little bit more gray. Then we'll come through and maybe add some, a little bit more detail in here. Maybe like some broken concrete. I'm just adding a little bit of brown in, a little bit of tan, very small spots. It's because it's gray is not always just flat gray, especially with like concrete. Cool. Now I might come through and um, do the sign. That's gonna be a hard one, but we'll do that in a second. We're gonna bring some blue in. So anything that's white, so it's like this ice machine down here, it's gonna cast more blue shadows than anything. And I don't know why I've just seen that done by a lot, like other artists have done that, but this helps and it makes sense so it keeps them looking white but if I were to add like red shadows into that or gray shadows it just doesn't look as good you know and that's gonna even cast a shadow on the door which our door is white so we're gonna leave it like that yeah it's looking really good very happy with it um, and the side of this wall is extremely dark because that's where the least amount of Sun is hitting so I'm gonna come back through and build that up and then bring in some more of those shadows. And even that one's gonna have a little bit of shadow on it. So just thinking, okay, where are the shadows hitting? Where can I add stuff to 
bolster the shadows. And I am adding a little bit of gray into these shadows under here to darken them, but it's not full black. I'm not allowing it to go dark, 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 dark. Just building up some of the shadows, but that will muddy your colors a little bit, so just be warned. Cool, really happy with that. We're gonna come back through while that's drying and add some more green in, contrast on those trees. So it's darker green. Like I said, if you needed to tone down your green, add a little bit of brown, it makes them look more foresty. And we're just gonna come through and add in just little bits here and there. You don't want it to be too broken up, but that'll just give your trees a little, little bit of life to them so they're not so flat. Okay, now I'm gonna to try to do some work on this sign, actually. Hmm. That's gonna be a hard one, super difficult. Yeah, that's a very small sign. So I'm not gonna put a ton of detail into it. Just cause. We don't want it to pull away, especially if I mess it up. I am using my smaller brush. Yeah, that was terrible, but that's okay. Come through. I'm gonna add in some more detail on these shingles and then we're gonna come back through with our pen and add the final, final touches in. And just add, it's because we got to pay respect to it, you know. It's okay to be a little sloppy. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, now we're gonna come back through and define some of our lines. Make sure that you've dried your painting, whether you let it just sit or you can use a hairdryer. Keep in mind, if you do use a hairdryer, it can force your colors around a little bit and create some cauliflowering. Come back through and define a lot of this stuff. And this is just going back through and giving it more detail. Um, you can kind of lose some of those lines a little bit when you're painting at least. And this is all helping the contrast as well. Um, contrast and and perspective are king and can take your your painting from decent to way better um, and I will 
I will pound those into your head until this channel ceases to exist anymore because those are super important. Come through and define those shadows. Taking some of these diagonal lines that kind of follow the pattern of the shade and adding them to the bottom. Not a ton. They can just kind of help define your shadows a little bit. There's a little lip under this door. It's looking really good. We're almost there, guys. It's been a little bit of a longer tutorial, I know, but it's fun. It's okay to take time, I know. You can feel like you need to rush through things, and but we're just here to enjoy the process, and if you're not enjoying it, you're doing it wrong. Um, it's a good reminder for me as well as I can get in the mindset of I need to get this done now but a rushed painting is never a good painting you know bring some lines back into this concrete because it's looking pretty flat little tufts of grass maybe Put in some birds because that's why I like birds. They kind of help balance the photo out a little bit. Yeah, this is super cool. Really pleased with how this one turned out, guys. Um, like I said, make sure that you share your finished work with me. I really really love seeing it and this makes me feel good it makes you guys feel good too it's, it's fun to to share it and share it on Facebook with people share it with your friends and peers that's kind of what helps me get through the the difficult parts of drawing is sharing it with people and knowing that once I finish something cool people are gonna love it you know Come back through with this dark pen to get more depth on those doors. Hopefully I don't kick myself for doing this. It should dry, but I'm using my brush pen here just because there was a little too much white spots in there for me. And I need to come through and define those paper signs, I think, too. Yeah, that's looking really good. Just coming back through into finding the darkest spots. Super cool. Okay, I think we're gonna sign it and call that good. So, let's We're going to pull off my favorite part. And these cheaper papers will tend to grab the tape, which is frustrating. I know Arches has a better time, especially if you get a little too much pressed down onto the paper. So be very gentle as to not disturb the paper underneath. And then I'm going to come back through. Oh, I love that. It just makes it look complete. That green tape, for some reason, just makes things look really bad uh, having it there. But we're going to come back through and add some stuff to these little signs in here. 
Cool. And that's going to wrap it up for today, guys. I hope you had fun. I know I did. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.